Welcome to day seven of 31 days of Horrorween. Um, this is the last day of Boyd Crowder week. Thank you so, so much for your suggestions, Boyd. <laughs> really, thank you. Yeah, so today we are gonna be talking about ghost ship. Before I get into anything else though, I want to say thank you to my creepy patron peeps for your support of my channel. Thank you so, so much. If you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep, you can follow that link in the description. Directed by Steve Beck, Ghost Ship follows a boat salvage crew that discovers an ocean liner that has been lost for more than 40 years. Once aboard, the crew confronts the ship's horrific past and avoid becoming a part of that horrific past themselves. All right, so the actual original idea for this movie um, was supposed to be more of a psychological horror and it came from scriptwriter Mark Hanlon, who per, like whose original script focused more on four members of the salvage crew who become stranded on the ship and over the course of one night, they all are driven mad either by panic, cabin fever or supernatural forces and they plot to kill the other three. And that was supposed to be the general gist of the movie and it's not totally confirmed um but i guess it's a rumor that the cast had signed on thinking it was going to be that script and were disappointed when they found out the script had drastically changed to the script that we now see in this movie so anyway so let's get into what i liked about ghost ship so this is yet another kind of classic um i don't know how many years you need to be around as a movie to be called a classic, but it's one of those kind of popular movies as well among a lot of people. Um, so kudos to Boyd for suggesting a lot of um, <laughs> good classics that I still hadn't seen. I guess the most iconic part of this movie is the opening scene with all the dancers on the boat and the wire, that scene. Um, and I had heard about that scene so many times so it was nice to finally see the movie and finally, you know, see the the wire scene in all of its glory. Speaking of that scene, um, the special effects have definitely aged a bit for that movie. Um, although I did think it was an effective scene and it set up the movie really well because it was like just gory enough to, you know, satisfy any moviegoers watching, but it also was mysterious enough that you wanted to keep watching the movie and find out what happened to them because that's such a crazy scene with like the wire literally slicing the whole dance floor in half. It's sick. I also really liked um, the symbolism of water. I think this movie got suggested or recommended to me when I did my review of Triangle, which you can watch the review for up wherever it pops up on the screen, I never remember. And I realized like thinking about this movie and Triangle, they're like, I know this is only two movies. <laughs> that I've seen um but I feel like even with like um The Fog too the movie The Fog which also which kind of deals with the sea in a sense it has to do with like pirates and things like that it doesn't necessarily take place completely on a boat like these ones do but um there's always like this theme of like the afterlife death you know, with these movies that have a lot to do heavily with like ships and water and the ocean and things like that um which you know is interesting because water is a popular symbol for like death, rebirth. Um, if you think of the River Styx in Greek mythology, it is the uh, border between the world of the living and the underworld. And that's kind of where this idea of the ferryman comes in because there's a ferryman who takes the, the souls that have passed across the River Styx into the underworld. And we have a character who is actually named Ferryman in the movie who is a ferryman for these souls um, in the movie, um, spoiler alert. <laughs> kind of jumping off of that, I like how the movie plays on the idea of the ferryman who in this movie is a more malevolent character than he normally is. He's usually just more, you know, kind of like, just like the messenger. He's just the conveyor of souls. He's not a, he's neither a good nor bad character in mythology usually. But in this movie, I like how they kind of play with it. And you know, like what if, this type of character were evil and so this ferryman is <laughs> collecting you know like murdering people and collecting souls um for his bosses who i'm gonna assume is somebody bad like the devil or something like that i don't know and after learning about the original script for this movie i feel like there were still some bits and pieces of that that were left in the movie um because we have uh, Murphy, who is supposed to be the focus of the original script, like in terms of going crazy, he does kind of hallucinate and go a little bit crazy and tries to kill Epps. 
in the movie. And then we also have other characters like Greer who are, you know, seeing ghosts and are being tricked by the ghosts and kind of driven a little bit mad. Um, so I think there were still some elements of the original script that were left in there. And I liked that. I liked the psychological aspect of it. And speaking of Greer, um, he's a really good example. I liked how some of the characters' deaths were kind of foreshadowed. So like I said, using Greer as an example, when he's exploring the ship, um, he sees the the poster for the Italian singer, comments on you know her tits or whatever, <laughs> and then he even like looks down the empty elevator shaft into the you know and he sees the top of the elevator or whatever. I um, mean he just looks down in it and it foreshadows his death where he is seduced by the ghost of the Italian singer and tricked into falling down that elevator shaft and dying. <laughs> There's some other instances of that in the movie too, and I really like the little foreshadowing bits. <laughs> That being said, um, there's some instances in the movie that just don't make a whole lot of sense. Using the character Greer as an example again, um, he's seduced by the ghost of that Italian singer, um, and when she appears to him, he just talks to her like everything's totally normal. Like, he doesn't sound freaked out or shocked at all. Um, and I thought in that scene he was supposed to be shit-faced drunk, and he's not talking like he's shit-faced drunk. So just like little like inconsistencies like that, which, you know, make you come out of the movie for a second you're just like wait what i also thought the flashback scene which explains like we finally you know we get a flashback scene that explains what happens on the boat that fateful night after everybody's <laughs> cut in half by the wire um i feel like it uh, they like whoever was like at editing this and adding the music they added this like early 2000s like alt rock something that it just i don't know it felt like more like a music video than anything. I feel like it took away from the seriousness of the, the flashback, like people were dying all over and I thought it was supposed to be scary. And yet, you know, there's just like this, I don't know, the music that they used just didn't fit and it was kind of in this like slightly slow motion. Go ship worth it. Um, I'm finally glad I watched it, but I don't think it's going to be one that I'm going to be dipping into again many more times. Um, but I'm glad I finally watched it. Um, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. On IMDb it has a 5.5 out of 10. On Rotten Tomatoes it has a 14% critic score and a 37% audience score. And on Letterboxd it has a 2.3 out of 5. I watched this movie on Amazon, so if you want to rent it via Amazon as well, you can use the link that's on my blog, as well as in the description box. There's no pressure to use that link, but if you do, it does help out the channel a little bit. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and become a creepy peep today. I post videos Monday through Friday regularly and I'm supposed to have a video up every single day of this month. If I ever get internet again. Um, thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay strange. Bye.